I'm Nadia Hewitt. I'm with the World Economic Forum's Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution. I'm based in San Francisco, um, where our headquarters um, is, and we also have offices in other countries around the world, and we partner very closely with, with governments in, in different regions. The World Economic Forum, just to give a bit of context, uh, the World Economic Forum is the intersection for public-private cooperation. We've been around for about 50 years. And we work on global systemic issues where we have a global impartial platform to bring together global leaders from public and private sectors. So global systemic issues that particularly needs collective action to convene and for parties to come together on that impartial um, platform. A few years ago, the founder and um, executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, Professor Klaus Schwab, started talking about the fourth industrial revolution. So the fourth industrial revolution, uh, we talk about those technologies, uh, blockchain, distributed ledger, um, artificial intelligence, internet of things. Um, he started talking about the fact that these technologies will not only influence industries, but it will fundamentally change what it means to be human. And the world is not prepared. These technologies, blockchain, is moving very fast. Governments can't keep up with regulation. So there's a big gap in how we govern today these technologies. So with that, we opened the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution, where we focus on these technologies to really help close that governance gap. How do we make sure that blockchain and distributed ledger technology is accelerated globally in a way that is inclusive and that you still have responsible deployment. We can't rely on regulation to help govern distributed ledger technologies. We need to find new agile ways um, to together, private sector leaning in together with the public sector, govern these technologies. Uh, give you a bit of context, so I'm with the blockchain and distributed ledger team. I lead a number of projects globally. We tackle a governance blockchain issue. We focus very narrowly and we'll actually go and do uh, deployments. We'll uh, co-design with organizations and governments globally the frameworks that goes with that deployment. And then we will use our global platform to scale um, the learnings, uh, embed best practices of those frameworks. To give you one example, in Colombia, we're working with the General Ex Inspector's Office on testing public permissionless Ethereum to deal with corruption, to deal with public RFPs. So what we do is we focus on Colombia, we bring in experts from around the world to then test the technology, develop frameworks, policies, protocols that could help with the successful deployment of that technology in that particular field, and then we make it available. We open source those frameworks globally, so we use that global platform. So I'm going to speak today about enterprise and how we support uh, enterprise development. In a number of the projects that I work in, we're helping to accelerate uh, blockchain and distributed ledger deployment in enterprises. So we use our, our impartial platform to help many industries uh, start blockchain uh, consortiums and then develop the governance around how they can scale um, those consortia um, in the long run. Over the last couple of years, I've worked in many different industries on helping enterprises, on helping industry consortiums, and through that, we've really come to know and understand what are some of the key barriers for enterprise um, adoption. Now, with, um, now that you have enterprise Ethereum, Ethereum can conquer the, the, the enterprise world as well. However, what are those barriers? Nothing new to you. The barriers are collaboration and sharing, right? Um, being here this week at DEF CON, we can see again that a lot of the technology issues will get solved, performance, scalability. Um, those things 
A lot of people are committed, a lot of smart people are committed to work on that. The issue in enterprise adoption is collaboration in sharing. Today, I will within that share three very specific barriers that we've seen time and time again across all industries that hampers, delay uh, blockchain consortium adoption, all that um, prevents the full potential of, of what the technology has to offer. Just a quick, just to level set, I'll just quickly touch on some basics of blockchain consortia. So in the 2019 Deloitte Global Annual Blockchain Survey, uh, they shared that 92% of organizations say that they either belong to a blockchain consortia or they plan to join a blockchain consortia in the next two months. So blockchain consortia in the enterprise world is the most typical way for these competitors and organizations to collaborate. Um, the reasons why they choose the consortia way, they see cost savings, according to the survey. It helps them to accelerate learning. They can share risks, share R&D. So this is a lot how we see these um, industries within the enterprise world um, organize themselves to adopt blockchain. We have, so for the first year and a half, we've seen a lot of CEOs focus on proof of concept. They were doing blockchain proof of concepts and they come away seeing value in certain areas. But then many of them realized they actually can't do it alone. They actually need to collaborate with their competitor. So many CEOs, organizations are starting to really realize that. But then that is where things start to get really difficult. And that's where we see a lot of the industry efforts falling over. It's in, in those competitors coming together. You know, many of them have never built a system together to then try and um, build something that's sustainable and scalable. They're really struggling with that. Um, you all know why, they need to why we need to collaborate with distributed ledger technology. Blockchain is the ultimate network technology. It's the peer-to-peer -peer nature around shared distributed ledgers. You need to collaborate. Again, organizations are starting to realize that. You need to work together on standards. You need to work together for interoperability. A lot of these enterprises we see are doing it because they want to share research and development. They continue doing their own research and development in-house, but they also then um, share cost, uh, joint resources, to do further research and development as part of these blockchain consortiums. Um, it also helps them to reduce time to market, gain intelligence and other things. So in working with these consortia in the last few years, what has the World Economic Forum seen as the three biggest barriers? I'm gonna give you three very practical things that we need to work on if we want to see enterprise development. If we want to see the potential truly being unlocked of what um, this technology has to offer, these are things that need deeper collaboration across all parties. The three things, um, the first one is, and again, I just want to, some of this was not new. I could have told you this maybe a year and a half, two years ago. But actually having lived through it, um, all the way from financial consortiums through to provenance of agriculture, coffee, mining and metals, through to insurance, through to mobility consortiums that we were involved with and that we got very deep insights, these three things comes up time and time again. It stalls, hampers, delay, stall, delay, um, and actually many times don't allow the consortium, the enterprise efforts to move forward. So these are things that, that needs to get worked on. The first one, and I'll go through each of them. The first one is ecosystem-wide. The fact that this is distributed network technology, um, thinking about your return on investment, thinking about value from an enterprise uh, ecosystem level is necessary. The second one, um, the focus on immediate proof of concept and long-term value, the tension that exists between that. And then lastly, 
how to get to fair, inclusive, and well-designed governance of that blockchain consortia. Okay, I'll go into the first one. Ecosystem-wide return on investment versus the individual organization. To deploy distributed ledger technology in a way where you're truly gonna get the benefit, businesses need to change their mindset. The traditional way for, of organizations thinking about maximum, maximizing um, profit within their own boundaries does not work within the consortia setup if you want to truly unlock the potential of the technology. Organizations do not know that, they're not familiar with that, it's a big mindset change. So going through these consortia formations, we've observed decisions made in building the technology and setting up the governance that has led to suboptimal optimal results because each organization are only thinking about their own value drivers, their own return of investment. But if you are building a solution for an ecosystem, if you're building a solution that's distributed, it doesn't make sense. You can't think about your own ROI. You need to think about the ecosystem's um, value. In the traditional world, these enterprises had to think about three things. They had to think about customer desirability, uh, technical feasibility, and um, the viability, the business viability. With the distributed ledger technology implementation, these organizations also need to understand and strive for eco um, ecosystem achievability. So managers need to think beyond company boundaries and think about that ecosystem viability, oh, achievability. If they make decisions based on just thinking of their own value, the solution and the potential and value they can unlock is just not going to be there. The second uh, barrier that we, again, observe time and time again, um, this one actually, I was just last week with an industry can't mention the, who the industry is, but that actually took more than a year in making a decision on the first proof of concept, a year between, an, uh, this is a number of competitors, to do a first proof of concept because they had this barrier. When a business-led consortia is being formed, you need to read consensus on the long-term vision, the long-term value levers, but also short-term value levers. In an enterprise world, many of these organizations are, you know, have to report to Wall Street. They need to see quick results. We've seen um, in many blockchain consortia, organizations leave because the results didn't come in quick enough. The thing is there's a tension many times between the value levers in the short run, doing this first few proof of concepts, and what they sometimes have to achieve long term. Imagine a few of the organizations in the consortium driving and aiming for the long term objective, but a few other organizations are just focused on what is the value I can get from this first proof of concept. Many times to, to reach your long term objective, you need to pursue proof of concept at first that a standalone might not make sense because you sometimes have to get initial data sources and then build upon that to reach the eventual long-term goal. Now you have these organizations trying to agree on pursuing that first, second, third proof of concept. What does their pipeline of development looks like? But they can't see eye and eye because some of them are purely focused on this one standalone proof of concept and what they can show and deliver to their organization who needs short-term, quick results versus pursuing the long-term objective. We need to find a way, project managers need to have education, they need experience in ecosystem, uh, trust mechanisms, asymmetry uh, information sharing, competitive games, um, and so much more in order to actually be able to understand how to best navigate the tensions that exist between these two so you don't delay um, these enterprise efforts. Another tricky piece with the short term versus long term is in the short term, 
with many uh, business-led consortia, they typically opt for a technology, uh, like a blockchain technology stack that then serves the purposes of the short-term uh, value lever. However, the technical dependencies that you then need to think of, of what does that technology stack needs to look like to achieve the long-term results, many times that is not then considered in the beginning because many of those organizations are so focused just on the short-term lever. So there's also the technical complexities of choosing your uh, you know, uh, te blockchain technology stack that can cater for both. And that brings me then to the last barrier that we see um, hamper uh, enterprise uh, adoption within consortiums, and that goes back to governance. Again, it's not the technical pieces that's difficult. You have competitors who have never worked together. Many of them have never sat in the same room. Now building a system together, having to decide about who owns the system, who pays for it, who's liable, who gets to see what data. These are difficult things. These traditional, um, the, these enterprises have been involved in consortiums before, but blockchain, there's a lot of unique aspects here that is very new. Actually, a lot of the issues um, around governance that the open software, open uh, source software have been looking into, a lot of it applies here as well. So um, within the distributed ledger consortia world, it will serve them well to go and look at some of these um, open source software governance and how they've mitigated and navigated through, through this challenge. A particular piece that the World Economic Forum is very concerned with here is small and medium-sized enterprises. We see within all these industries, and as they come together as blockchain consortia, those who can afford consultants and who can afford big legal teams are the ones that ends up having a lot of leverage when it comes down to governance decisions. So while blockchain governance is very new, while we, will, while we are all still learning, while going through lessons, while we are still embedding best practices and designing policies around helping consortiums to succeed and conclude on governance that's scalable, sustainable, and inclusive, the, the small, medium-sized enterprises has a real risk here of being left out. And if you do actually do look at value change and ecosystems of many consortia, um, a lot of the volume and, and value still comes from that small and medium-sized enterprises. So how to make sure you set up uh, well-designed governments and how do you make sure that the way that value is allocated, who captures the value, is fair and something that's sustainable long-term? Uh, so, these three things are what we see there's a real urgent need for everybody, technologists, economists, um, consultants, uh, public sector, private sector, to lean in and work on helping to solve these issues. It's, today, these three things are hampering the ability of enterprises to adopt and drive forward the acceleration of blockchain. We need to work on this. And just to end, I find this kind of powerful. Why when we want need to get collaboration right? The power of getting collaboration right. I don't know if any of you remember the Got Milk campaign. This is a campaign in the 80s. The milk industry was really suffering, and then they collaborated. Competitors set up ways to, co to collaborate. Through this campaign, they completely changed the way the world, I mean, I'm from South Africa at the time, the, the, the ways we were feeling from this campaign um, was felt all the way down in the south of Africa. The way that milk <laughs> is perceived, the way that it was uh, regulators, school, health, everybody was looking um, around the value of milk at the time has completely changed through collaboration of these um, organizations. And for me, that again just shows that in the power of collaboration to get this right for us to really accelerate um, this and unlock the potential of the distributed piece of, of this technology, we need to, to get and help project managers and organizations navigate through these challenges.
So with that, I have, um, I'm also pretty much out of time, so that's my contact details. Um, if any of you have any more questions around the consortia work that we do um, across different industries, across different enterprises, or you want to help in this effort, we are looking to design um, frameworks to help with um, what constitutes fair, inclusive, and well-designed governance. Um, and we'll continue to be quite active in the space for the, for the coming years. And then I believe there's a QR code if any of you needed that. Thank you very much for your time.